Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Talking Sense with Alistair Milroy of Breaking the Mold Accounting. How are you, Alistair? I'm really good, Rhea. Yeah, really good. Well, I'm surprised that you're actually here today. You have just embarked on a very ambitious thing this past weekend. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I've, um, I'm over in Palma in New Yorker, and last week or, or from Saturday, Friday, no, Friday it started. Um, we arrived and uh, I joined the Six Points Challenges, which is a charity set up in Mallorca. Um, and it basically rides the six points of Mallorca from the, the, the north, east, southwest points of Mallorca uh, and the highest and the lowest. I have to say I only did the Valley route, which is a slightly shorter than the Montana's route, which is the full route, but it was still uh, 344 kilometers of cycling in three days, um, which, uh, yeah, for various reasons, I wasn't as prepared as I'd like to. So I actually managed to double my 2022 cycling distance wow. in three days. And as you know, it was very hot. So uh, it was it was great, really good challenge, really nice people, a lot of uh, people in the yachting community involved, um, and it raises money for uh, two local charities in New York as DECA, which uh, supports disabled children, and Yachting Gives Back, which, which supports um, uh, people who are uh, in New Yorker who are really financially you know, finding it difficult and um, they support with providing food, accommodation, clothing, etc. It's a really good charity and a really good cause. Nice. So, um, yeah, I, I will include a link because people can still donate, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. Till through to the end of June. So, yeah, we can definitely put the links on. There's a, there's a, uh, just giving page for UK and there's also a European page. Uh, I think I know it's a grain of sand in English. Uh, Melo, I'm not going to we'll try find to it in Spanish. It. We'll find it. <laughs> I'll post it on. So yeah, I mean, it's and it's been a scorcher in Palma this past weekend. Yeah. So the, you must have been dying Sun out there. Sunday, uh, cycling back from uh, Sarcoma all the way across to Santa Andrea. Uh, to Port Adriano, uh, Adriano was, yeah, we, uh, yeah, certainly I think people touched saw 41, 42 on their, their uh, com bike computers and the, it was, it was very hot. There was lots of stops, lots of water refills. Um, yeah, really, it was a really tough day, but you, you dig in when it's for a good cause and uh, it's, it's part of it doing it with other people as well and the, the teamwork's, you know, fantastic. So. But yeah, it helps to have some good inspiration. It's great to have some good people to ride with. Yeah, for sure. Well, today we want to talk about uh, the important, some important management information. There, there are some things that um, when you are, when you have your own business or when you are managing a business, um, there are things that are really, really important. Let's start off with budget. Yeah, so um, budget's really important. Budget's really um, whether it's for a business or for a yacht, I think you know, most yachts will have a budget as well. It's really setting out um, an expectation of what the expenditure and if you've, you're a business, also what the revenue is going to be for the year ahead um, and giving yourself a target, I guess, in terms of in a plan, in terms of what you're going to do. So it's really looking at looking ahead and saying, right, what do we want to achieve as a business and putting some formal structure around preparing those numbers. And forecasting. Yeah, the forecasting is um, you know, similar to budgeting, but the difference is really to, when you're forecasting, you're actually looking at how the business is performing. And then you know, rather a budget's looking forward and saying this is the plan, a forecast is really trying to measure the actual performance and based on those actual numbers, what you're actually going to achieve. So it's similar to a budget, but a different, slightly different um, perspective. You'll normally do a forecast more regularly and revisit it more regularly. A budget you'll tend to set for the start of the year, it's set and that's it. Whereas a forecast will be maybe quarterly, you'll be looking at a forecast and going, how are we actually 
how is the business actually achieving in real terms and, and looking at the, the actual numbers and forecasting those forward to see whether you're actually going to achieve your budget or not. Yeah, I, I guess it's it's like you've got a main plan and then you've got a you know a smaller plan on how to get there. And every every few months you sort of reevaluate that plan to see if you're actually going to achieve those goals doing what you're doing now or whether or not you need to take a look at it and change your strategy. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. To 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 actually achieve your budget, you might need to the forecast is really measuring things of well, actually we're not on target there. What do we need to change? To, to still reach that more strategic goal. Yeah. And cash flow. Something everybody is, always cringes. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they say cash is king. Um, and, you know, you know, it's great to have sales and revenue, but if your sales are going up and you're trading and you've got lots of revenue, but you're not actually producing any cash um, or what you're producing is all being spent, then you're going to have a problem. So. Yeah, having a cash flow um, as part of your forecasting as well, the, the cash flow forecast, really looking at where are we in the business? Have we got enough money to do what we want to do? You know, and, and measuring that. Again, having that formal measurement and looking forward to what's our cash flow forecast can just allow you to recognize when you've got going to have problems in the business. And there's often expenses come up where we've talked about before, you know, tax bills, VAT bills, and things can come as a surprise for for business owners if, if you're not careful. So planning those forward um, does definitely help. Um, and knowing you've got you know, these big expenses, you can be sitting there thinking, "Well, wow, we're doing really well. We've got a great profit. And there's lots of cash." But actually, if that a lot of that cash is sitting and actually needs to be sent to the the revenue authorities as VAT, etc., then that can change the, the position of a company quite quickly. Well, I mean, I think we've all experienced it because, you know, even though you may be billing or, or you know, your sales may be X per month, that doesn't mean that you're going to get all of that money in every month. You know, it, it's, it's almost as if you have to be three to four months in advance and that cash will come in, but you always have to continue, you know, to, to watch what is coming in and what your sales is because, you know, you're not going to see the rewards from those sales for months in the future. Yeah, there's some, um, there's some really sort of key things you can measure in a business around that. And I'd say debt to days is one of those. So looking at how long it takes you to convert your, your sales to actual cash um, and then looking at how you can reduce that. So um, in simple terms, you're looking at your debtors, uh, how, how quickly they convert to cash and measuring that in the number of days. So, you know, if it's three weeks or, or 60 days to, to convert, then that's probably going to cause you cash flow. So it's, if you start measuring those numbers and, and get them down to, you know, really 10, 10 days, seven days, then you know, you've got that cash conversion. It's going to be different for each business depending on, on how they work, but um, that's, that's a key KPI to have in place um, is your day to days. Um, you know, other things in, around cash flow is, is is looking at sales and discounting as, as well. You know, giving someone a 10 percent discount doesn't sound like very much, and, and we all know customers ask for discounts. But if you're only got a 10 percent margin and you're giving you know you give away 10 percent discount, you're actually not making any money. So the, the revenue line looks great, the sales line looks great, but you're not making you know generating any cash that you can invest back into your business or or provide back to your shareholders. Um, so yeah, it's really important. Well, and you did just mention KPI, which is the key performance indicator. What is that? Yeah, so key performance indicators will, uh, the more than one, but you're looking at your business and putting some measurements in place that you know that if you, you know, do those things, you know, I guess it's putting the system, the process in place to go, right, if we know if we, keep debt -to days down, if we you know, know what our inventory turnover is, look at our margins um, on our sales and profit and measure those, then the results, the profitability, the cash flow will be okay. Um, and they can be financial KPIs or they might be also, you know, things like customer feedback, doing regular customer service surveys, um, looking at your performance, but it's, it's looking at, 
each individual business or even in a yacht and look at you know looking at your you know, things like staff turnover can be a, a good kpi um because you know, if you've got a lot of staff turnover it's going to be costing your business it's going to be taking up management time to recruit you're going to have more recruitment fees you've got training time that all those things will will impact your business performance which is exactly what all the uk airports are going through right now yeah yeah and i've been warned in fact i was slightly late rear on the show because i was um trying to book my fast track in palma because i believe it was also quite quite um tough at the airport getting through security yesterday so i don't think there's a single airport on the face of the planet right now that had their proper kpi in place no, I, I think COVID people's obviously cut back and, and airports probably let go staff they didn't know. And uh, now they're, you know, exactly that. They're having to train, find staff, train them up. And, and you know, I think worldwide we're seeing there's a real, you know, we're seeing it in yachting as well. There's you know, a demand for good quality crew um, and getting those trained up. And I think, yeah, both businesses and your own and owners and managers need to will will, will and are looking at you know, how to actually retain staff, how to improve their and crew, and you know, how to improve the working conditions. And is you know are we going to get more longevity and less burnout if we have things like rotation on board? Well, and they're probably going to be building in the idea that you know in the past they never would have built in the concept of a pandemic. Um, and I think now that most businesses, airports, uh, yachts, you name it, they're going to be saying, okay, we need to have a contingency plan in case of some unknown, you know, disastrous occasion that we have to account for because, you know, this is unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. I, and if you look at, you know, we know that the number of businesses that, that fail is, you know, in the first 10 years, I think it's, something like 80% or 90% of businesses in somewhere like the UK don't make it to their 10th anniversary. And, you know, I think a lot of this comes around having those solid plans. If you're measuring, you know, you're budgeting, forecasting, you've got good KPIs, um, you've got that management information coming through from your finances, then you can, you can have a lot better chance of success because you're, it, it's a, putting that process around making you um, have those disciplines in your business. Um, and you know, yes, pandemics can come along and wars can come. Along. There's lots of things that happen. We can have a global financial crisis. We can have interest rates rates go up. You know, they're the sort of we know they happen. You, you know, it's you know, who would have said thought we'd have a pandemic two years ago, but it's happened. And businesses had to pivot really quickly. And those who were already you know using digital um, electronic storage and cloud technology were. Um, you're yeah, able to respond to their clients uh, a lot quicker than those that that weren't and perhaps had you know, video conferencing in place, et cetera, as well. So, yeah, I think having a plan and, and building in, you know, part of your forecast is what would be, what would happen if interest rates go to 4% or you know, how, how is that going to affect us? How's it going to affect our customer base? And, you know, looking at those, modeling those scenarios can really help a business plan ahead well that is important i mean you know we saw what happened with the cryptocurrencies what last week or the week before <laughs> i mean you just never know and you've got to make sure that you know the good old fashioned i don't care if you're stuffing money underneath your mattress place the fact is you've got to have you know a plan in place for something that you just never would imagine would happen on the face of the planet yeah, uh, and having that cash buffer in a business is is critical as well. So that's part of that planning. You know, how long, how much do we need? How much capital do we need in the business that we can we can access at, at, at short term? I mean, a lot of people over the last ten years have relied on cheap, low interest rates, low cost of borrowing, but you know, that that's changing. And you know, starting to look at some of those things and go, actually, you know, how do we yeah, bank that will change also banks' appetite as well, and you know you just never know when you know, a, a bank or something who's been maybe fairly supportive of business has a change of appetite and doesn't like your your industry or your sector, and and all of a sudden you have you know, 
an issue with fund raising that cash. So that it's we all know that yeah, plan yeah, planning ahead, whether it's in personal finances or business finances, is going to give you a much better chance of success. Right. Well, if you want any more information, we will make sure to provide all of Alistair's information underneath, underneath this interview when it airs. And next week, we have a guest, don't we? We do, yeah. We have uh, Kerry Letizia, who's a Guernsey advocate. Um, she works very much in the high net worth uh, space with, with trust with companies, corporate service providers, um, offering legal in-house counsel. So yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to talk to her about you know, what, what uh, high net worths need to think about with uh, setting up structures, um, why you use crown dependency in companies that uh, are in these offshore centers um, and how to prepare for doing that and have things move quickly for you. So yeah, really looking forward to having Kerry on the show. Nice. Well, thank you, Alistair, once again for um, all of your insight. And uh, as, as mentioned, we are going to make sure to post um, the link for the charity that you wrote for in this past weekend below this interview and as well all of your information for contact. Yeah, well, and I'm going to keep, keep the cycling up. It's fantastic uh, to get out in the countryside. I mean, Palm is absolutely beautiful if anyone if you're into cycling or being outdoors, then I certainly recommend coming coming to Palmer and um, seeing it on a bike. It's, it's a fantastic place to come. It is. It's absolutely stunning. I have to attest to that. Right. You've been watching another edition of Talking Sense right here on Yachting International Radio. Thank you again to Alistair Milroy of Breaking the Mold Accounting. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next week.